Hi everyone. Today we are going to be making large dog booties. And we'll be doing that in just a minute. Okay, so today we're going to be doing large dog booties. Now I had a customer come to me and they wanted large dog booties. And this is what I came up with. Now, I did double thickness on the bottom. And then I have a little section here with holes to put ties through. And it fits my fist. <laughs> so I'm hoping that they'll fit the large dog foot. So, here's what I did. We're going to start. I've got three done. So, I took my two yarn. Okay, first of all, I'm using a number five crochet hook. I'm using four ply worsted weight yarn. And I'm using two strands for the foot, like for the pop bottom part only. And then I'll need a pair of scissors and a darning needle. And I always forget to bring the darning needle with me, but we'll pause and I'll go grab it. So to start off, you do chain two. So one, two. Now, I always catch my tail with that first loop, and I'm going to do six single crochets in that first stitch. And it is a bit hard because you're using two, uh, two yarns at once. So here we go. Three, four, five, and six. Now I'm just going to double check. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then we're going to slip stitch into that first stitch to make it a circle. Chain one up. So we have this. Okay, so now we're going to build this. We're going to have to build it out to 30, okay? And I don't have a written pattern for this because like with many things, I just eyeballed it and I kind of made something up and that's what I do with a lot of my stuff. So here we go. We're going to put two in every stitch around. So one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so then, what do I have going on here? Of course I've got a tangle because that's what I do. How can this even happen? Grr, 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 <laughs> Sorry, we interrupt this because I've tangled up my yarn. Oh, now what did I do? Okay, so we'll put that back through. And I still have a knot. Jeez. go from this end. We'll take the ball through. There! Okay, we're good. <laughs> okay, so we were at 12 and now we're just going to slip stitch. Okay, and then chain one. So we're ready for our third round. And I just pulled that tail tight and that'll cinch up the center nice and tight. Okay, so now we're going to go two in the first stitch. One, two and then we're going to do one in the next stitch so three now we're going to get to 18 by doing two and one two and one so we've got three four and five go in the same stitch six goes in the next one seven and 
eight go in the same stitch, nine goes in the next one. I'm stuck again. I'm getting to the end of my yarn and it's... Okay, so 10, 11 in one stitch, 12 in the next, 13, 14 in the next stitch, 15 on its own, 16 and 17 in one stitch, 18 on its own. Then we're going to slip into that first stitch, chain one. Okay, so we've got 18 in that round now. And we're going to work up to 30. So the next round is going to be in multiples of four, okay? So we're going to do one and two in a single stitch in that first stitch. We're going to do three in one stitch and four in one stitch. Oops. Then we're going to do five and six in one stitch, seven and eight on their own in single stitches, and then nine and ten in one stitch, eleven on its own, twelve on its own. So then 13 and 14 in one stitch, 15 on its own, 16 on its own, 17, 18 in one stitch, 19 on its own, 20 on its own. Then we're going to do 21, 22 in one stitch, 23, 24 on their own. And then slip stitch to the first stitch and chain one. So 24 we're at now. And we want to get up to 30. Okay. So now we're going to go in multiples of five, okay? So the first one is one, oops, one and two in one stitch, three on its own, four on its own, five on its own, okay? Then we're doing six, and seven in the same stitch, eight on its own, nine on its own, 10 on its own. Okay, sorry, my yarn is getting messed up again. So 11 and 12 together in one stitch, 13 on its own, 14 on its own, 15 on its own. See how we're always ending on a five? So 16 and 17 together in one stitch, 18 on its own, 19 on its own, 20 on its own. Okay, 21 and 22 in the stitch, 23 on its own, 24 on its own, 25 on its own. Then we're going to do 26, 27 together in one stitch, 28 on its own, 29 on its own, and 30 on its own. Okay, so now we are going to slip stitch. Okay, we are leaving the red behind. We want to give it a bit of a tail. Whoa, we're not going to throw. 
the scissors. Okay, so we're leaving a bit of a tail on the, the red. Okay, then we are going to chain one with the black only, only the black. Now we are going to do a single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So we should be able to get 30 stitches all the way around. Okay, so single crochet, yarn through, yarn over, go through the two loops. You through, yarn over through the two loops. And we'll do this all the way around. Okay. So I'm going to do that and I'll meet you back here. Just pause me so you can catch Okay, up. so I'm getting to the last couple of stitches. I'm going to just do them. And I counted to 30. So there should be 30 stitches all the way around. Single crochets in black. Now... We are not going to chain up. We are not going to join. We see our next stitch, which is the black one right there. We are going to do a half double crochet and we're just going to start spiraling now. Okay, so one half double crochet is yarn over, through, grab your yarn, go through all three loops. And we're going to do this for six rows and we're just doing one in each one for six rows. So, like I said, I don't have a pattern because that's just not the way I do things. I kind of just do things as I go. So, to do a double crochet, yarn over, or sorry, this is a single, or a, a half double crochet. Yarn over, through the stitch, grab your yarn, pull up, yarn over, through all three loops. Through the stitch, grab your yarn, go through all three loops, okay? Yarn over, through your stitch, grab your yarn, yarn over, go through all three loops. And we're going to do that for six rows, okay? So you see here, you can see a definite row. I hope you can see that. It's hard with dark colors, but it's the colors he wanted, so unfortunately... So we're going to do that for six rows. If you have a hard time differentiating your rows, just know we're only counting the half double crochet rows. We're not counting the, the pad. We're not counting that single row of that row of single crochets. We're only counting the half double crochets and we're going to do those. And since we we're not having a start or an end. We're just going to go in a spiral. We'll want to make sure that we have six rows on either side of our crochet hook. And what I mean by that is, see here I have one row, but on this side I have no rows. So, because it's that single crochet and we're not counting that. We're only counting the rows for double crochet. So we want six rows of double crochet. And that gives us the length of our booty. Now... I haven't measured this on a dog, I will admit that, but I did measure the dog against me, and that sounds kind of funny, but his paw fit in the palm of my hand. So I figure if I make a fist, that that would be the size of his paw, right? So that's what I'm going by for size. So I know that paws don't sit exactly the same way but as our fists, but it's a good starting place. So this, like I said, is for a large size dog. The dog I'm making this for, I, I think it's a mutt, but it looks like it might have Rottweiler in it. Maybe, maybe a bit of Pitbull. But it's got a fairly big foot, I think. So we're just going to do triple crochet, or not triple, jeez louise, half double crochets all the way around. So for six rows. Sorry, my yarn keeps getting. Now, I have done other dog videos. I've done dog sweaters and, um... 
I'm not sure if I've done other dog booty videos. I make other dog booties. I have some a slideshow of all the different kind of dog stuff that I do make because I make collars and I make toys and I make booties and sweaters and I don't make a lot for large dogs because usually people don't want to pay what it would cost like I'm thinking for these booties I'm gonna have to charge at least twenty dollars for a set of four because it's quite a lot of yarn and it take it took me quite a bit of time too. So see here, now you can see here I have one, two rows, but on this side of the crochet hook I only have one row. So you want to keep going until you have six rows on either side. And if you have seven on one side, that means you've gone for too long. So just backtrack until you have six rows on each side of your crochet hook. And then we'll uh, go to the next step. Anyway, what I was saying about my other dog things is I will leave some links in the description so that you can go look at my other dog stuff. I kind of, it's funny, I love making jewelry and I love doing stuff for babies and I love doing things for animals, but like, that's, that's where my stuff, that's where I stop. I, I don't usually make things for older people. I do make a vest that I really like making and I've tried to sell them at craft sales, but because they take so long to make, it's like a $75 vest. And people just aren't interested in paying that much because they can go get like a machine made vest for that price or less. So they rather go with, at least in this area. Um, and I've never, have I tried them online? Maybe I have tried them online. I'm not sure. But uh, otherwise, I just don't make full size anything. It's usually small dogs and small babies. Okay, so I'm going to keep going with this. I'm going to do my six and then I'm going to come back and we'll go to the next step. Kay. Hi there. So I'm getting to the end of where I need to be. So I just want to show you. So see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six rows on this side of my crochet hook. And on this side I have one, two, three, four, five rows. So I'm just going to finish up until I have six rows on either side of my crochet hook. And I'm guessing it's going to be around here somewhere. So I'm going to do a few more half double crochets. Now I'm going to count one, two, three, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So I'm there. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to slip stitch into the next stitch. Okay. So slip stitch into the next stitch. And then I'm going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. Now the reason I did that, I did one, two, three, two, be a double crochet and I did a chain one and now I'm going to skip the next stitch and go into the second stitch from that chain and do a double crochet. A double, not a half double, but a double. Now I'm going to chain one and I'm going to skip the next stitch and I'm going to do another double. So this is giving me this part where we put the lace to tie on the dog booty. Okay, so to do a double crochet, just in case, just to refresh, yarn over into the stitch, grab your yarn, pull through, go through two loops, go through two loops, and that's a double crochet. Then you want to chain one, skip that next stitch, go into the following stitch, and do a double crochet. Chain one, skip the next stitch, go
go into the following stitch and we're going to do this all around the top of this booty. Okay, so skip one, double crochet, chain one. And I'm not going to pause here, I'm just going to do it with you watching. We can talk about things. So how was your day? <laughs> It's winter here and it has been snowing for three days, which is good because we had forest fires last summer, so we want the moisture, but uh, it means a lot of shoveling driveways. A lot, a lot, a lot. So chain one, skip one, go into the following and do a double crochet. Chain one, skip one, following double crochet. So my kids, they shovel driveways and they've been shoveling driveways for three days. And while they are making money, they're looking every morning to hope that it hasn't been snowing because they're on Christmas break and they don't want to do any more driveways. Okay, so then when we get to the end, see there's my chain four. I'm going to go into the third chain from the bottom. So that would have been the top of the double crochet. Okay. And I'm going to slip stitch into that and close off our ribbon round. Now I'm going to chain two. One, two. I'm going to do a half double crochet in this space and then a half double crochet in the stitch. Then a half double crochet in the space and a half double crochet in the stitch. And I'm going to do this all around. Now, I don't usually count, um, but you want to get 30 stitches. And I don't count because I've been doing this for a lot of years and I usually get 30 stitches. And if you're off by one, it's not a big deal. If you're off by five, it's a big deal. So if you're new to crocheting, you'll want to count and make sure that you've got 30 stitches. If you're not new to crocheting, you know that that one stitch won't make a huge difference on this because you're going to have a tie up here and you're, the point of the tie is to cinch it anyway. So if you're out of stitch, it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so half double crochet in space, half double crochet in stitch, half double crochet in space, half double crochet in stitch. And we're doing this all the way around. And when we get to the other side, we are going to slip stitch and do another row. Okay, so in space, in stitch in space. Whoops, missed. Okay, so now we're going to attach it to our chain that we did. And we're going to chain two. I always chain two for half double crochet and I chain three for double crochet. So now we're just going to put one half double crochet in every stitch around. Just to give it a little bit of a, a brim. Okay, so we'll do that and then we'll slip stitch into that starting stitch and we will tie off. So if you're a faster crocheter than me, you can just zip along and do that. If you are the same speed as me, then we can just keep pace. And if you're a bit slower, go ahead and pause it until pause it until I get there and then we can catch up and I'll show you how to do exactly that. So, wow, I'm almost out of black yarn. I'm going to have to get another ball out. There we go. Almost.
almost to the end here. So half double crochets in every stitch around. Okay, so we're at the end. Whoops, and I got a knot. Okay, so then we slip stitch into that first chain or that chain at the top, the third chain, and then we pull it, we snip it, and we pull tight. So there we go. We've got the fourth of our dog booties. Now we're going to make the ties. I don't know if I've got enough here to make a tie. I have to go grab more yarn. I'll be right back. You know, I might have enough, so we're just going to give it a try. So we want to put our two yarns together again, and we're going to do a chain of 60. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's so funny. Seven, eight. 10. Whenever I do chains and I'm getting to the end of my yarn, I always chain faster thinking some reason that'll stretch my yarn, but it really doesn't. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, Okay, so we're just gonna pull that tight, pull the other side tight, tight as you can. Okay, and we need to make four of these, so come back when you've made four. Okay, I'm back. So I've got four ties and my darning needle. I went and got it. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna hide our ends. So Pull that middle one tight, tight. Thread your darning needle. And we're just gonna get rid of those ends. Now, because these are for a little puppy dog's feet, rather than putting knots, which can be, you know, dig into your skin, I'm sure we've all experienced that. I'm just gonna go back over my stitch and I'm gonna do that multiple times. Oh my goodness, I can't get the... There we go. So, I stitch and then I go back and I go through some more stitches forward. There we go. Until I can't do it anymore. And I snip. Then we're gonna have that red tail. Again, you want to pull that tight. And I'm just gonna do the same thing. I stitch for a bit. I'm gonna go back over that stitch and go a little further. Then go back over that stitch and go a little further. Go back over that stitch and go a little further. I'm just gonna do this multiple times until most of the yarn is gone. Okay, and then snip. Then we don't have any harsh knots that the little puppy is gonna step on. Now this is our tall tie. Now this isn't gonna be tight against the leg, and this is where it would unravel if it was gonna unravel. So this one I am gonna do a knot. So I'm going to go back through where I went and then I'm just going to catch the loop once and go through again and then pull tight and that makes a little knot. 
is also a knot I use for when I make jewelry. Believe it or not, I find that there's a lot that I do with crocheting and knitting that I can incorporate to my jewelry making as well. So, and vice versa. So here we go, we're just gonna hide this thread along here. That knot you can hardly even feel. And this isn't gonna be tight against the dog's leg anyway. So then I put down my darning needle. Do a snip. Okay, turn this back inside in. Okay, now I'm gonna take my tie and I just take my ends, I make sure I pull them really tight. Okay, and then I take my ends and I put put them together. I do one finger width like you see the hairdressers do. And I give them a snip. And then they have nice little even finished ends. We're going to just weave this through. There we go. Then we are going to give it a nice little bow. And there we go. We have one dog booty, totally complete. So do that to the other four. I'll come back and show you a finished picture of all of them. Be back in a And sec. there we go. There is our finished product. We have four large dog booties. So I hope you liked my video. Hit that subscribe and like. Um, don't forget that if you want notifications when I do new videos, you just have to hit the little bell. Um, and I will put a link to some of my other dog patterns in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.